Welcome to Creating Connections Podcast, episode 146. I'm Mitch Taylor. And I'm Vicki Musney. And today we have the pleasure of introducing you to a woman who is a full-time DJ. She's a social media strategist, and she helps companies, wedding and event companies, grow their business through social media. She's appeared at Wedding MBA, upcoming at Mobile Beat Las Vegas 22, and she has an amazing social media strategy workshop that you can take and be a part of at Mobile Beat Las Vegas 22. And while all those things are really important, she is our friend. Yes. I first met this person the second time I spoke at Mobile Beat, so probably four years ago now. And she just came up to me after my workshop and was talking about personalities and I didn't, you know, she was just one of many people that I met in the post, you know, post seminar hoopla. And then a year later, we ended up in a workshop together, a master of ceremonies training that Mitch was also in with one of his staff. And uh, she and I were roommates for that workshop. We've roomed together at several other conferences. And I'm just super excited to have her on the show today. So please welcome our friend and full-time mobile DJ, social media strategist, here to help you with your marketing campaigns on social media, Stacy Nichols. That was nice and easy. What are you talking about? This also speaks to a much bigger issue. Providing personal solutions through understanding people. This is the Creating Connections Podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musney. Welcome to Creating Connections Podcast, episode 146. I am Mitch Taylor. I'm Vicki Musney. And this is our friend Stacy. Hey, hey Stacy. How you doing? I'm great. Enjoying the hot winter weather in San Diego. <laughs> Must be nice. It, it was so cool. Yes. Cool. Yeah, yes. no, it is um, not, probably not as cold in Mich- as it is in Michigan, but Reno's definitely colder than San Diego for sure. So. Yeah, definitely, no, it's, definitely. It's, a, it's in the upper 70s right now. Well, we're excited that you would take some time out of all of that torturous, you know, enjoying the the heat of a a warm January day at the beach to come and join us for a while to talk about social media connections for event pros. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Could you start? Because I know Mitch and I have known you for a while. We've done workshops and stuff together. But could you just share with all of our listeners just a brief version of your story. How did you get into events? What kind of events do you do? What's your business like? Sure. Well, I originally started DJing with a friend of mine that um, really only did Spanish music and had pretty much all Mexican clients. So about the first year and a half, um, we just did bilingual events. So he would play the Spanish music and then literally we would switch seats and I would sit down and I would drive and then we would pass the microphone back and forth between, he would say something in Spanish and I would say in English. So uh, right after that, I moved to Puerto Vallarta in Mexico and I did destination weddings and um, went on by myself. So I had the Spanish music down pretty well by then. And then, um, about two or three years ago, I moved uh, back up to the San Diego area and kept doing my thing. So uh, I got into doing the social media stuff when I actually uh, was invited to DJ at the world's largest social media conference, which is every year in San Diego. It's called Social Media Marketing World. And um, in exchange for DJing there, I got a free ticket to the conference. So that's awesome. That yeah. piece of that story, Mitch, I think is everything that we love about creating connections, isn't it? It's yep. like <laughs> it's ongoing education, it's being not, in the right place at the right time. <laughs> not just creating connections, but leveraging yes. connections. Which yeah. exactly. exactly kudos to you. Outstanding. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. And uh, and then you've made quite a name for yourself in sharing what you have learned about your DJ and event business with lots of other event pros. So we are really excited to have you um, sharing with us today. So 
Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I just finished speaking at the wedding MBA, so that was that was pretty great experience. We had standing room only in there, so nice. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty exciting. Wedding MBA is a great show for those that want to go and network and learn with some of the best uh, planners and entertainers and photographers and florists and anyone who's related to the wedding and event business uh, should definitely try out Wedding MBA at, at some point and return as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because connections can just yeah. come from there. Yeah. So. yeah, there's a lot of value there. And we'll talk a little bit more about Mobile Beat, but because um, that's coming up in just under two months. So I can't wait to see you and hear your workshop. But let's talk about some specifics first. So, Stacy, I'm curious, you being the social media guru that you are, what are the top three platforms that you would say a wedding or event business should focus on? Yeah, um, I think right now where you're going to see the biggest impact is going to be on Pinterest, Instagram, and then I would suggest, I mean, this may not be like directly answering, but I would say Facebook Live, not that that's a separate thing from Facebook, but that we right. should really be putting a lot of attention on going live on Facebook. Um, yeah, you can go live on Twitter and other platforms, but I still think Facebook is is really the, the place that we need to be going live for behind the scenes stuff or when we're actually at an event. So absolutely, that's interesting that you mentioned that and you're like, you kind of put that caveat. It's on a separate platform, but, and honestly though, I feel like it kind of is because I live on Facebook. That's been my home, my playground for the last 10 years. That is where I connect. I mean, I literally have said to people, I don't know how to be friends with you if you're not on Facebook. Like I can't invite you to things. I, you know, that it's where I live, but I, I will you're, confess. You're like, Don't email me, just Facebook me. I'm like, okay. But I will confess, I have never done a Facebook live video. Ever. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, I've, I've never done that. Mitch that. totally has that down. He's like so into that, but I, yeah. It's scary. So it it's is kind scary. of a separate entity. It really is. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that helped me a lot, because I, I really was very nervous about it myself. Um, I let the last social media marketing world conference, I went to a Twitter seminar and they actually made us take out our phones and go live on Twitter in the workshop. Nice. So we're going to be doing the same thing at my workshop because I know there's a lot of people that they've never done their first post here or gone live there. And so we're going to actually get out our phones and do that stuff. So we'll be very hands on. Wait, so Vicki, you have a ticket to her workshop, don't you? I do. I do. This is a total like facing my fears, <clears throat> personal growth, like... Yes, I am going to Stacy's workshop. I have signed up. I am registered and paid. I will see you in less than two months in Las Vegas nice. and have four hours of you telling me all of the things that I should be doing on social media besides hanging out in my one little comfort zone on my <laughs> non-video live part of Facebook. <laughs> The good thing is you have that yellow personality, so it won't be that it won't be that difficult for you. Just you know, there need, you go. Need, a, need a little push towards getting that <laughs> first, uh, foot in the water, or whatever. And you, sure. I know you will be, do fabulously. So, so, question: We talked about the top three platforms people should be focusing on as Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook Live. Let's say I'm an event planner. What sh specifically for a strategy should I be implementing into my Pinterest and or my Instagram? Sure. I think um, it wouldn't be that different from really what almost any wedding professional should be doing. Um, I think for Instagram, we're seeing a little bit too heavy of people just doing like a gig log okay, here's my flowers at this event. Okay, here's my flowers at that event. Okay, here's my flowers at the next event, which we do, you know, you should be showing off your work. You definitely should be doing that. But let's also see behind the scenes and your personal life. I really feel like Instagram has sort of become the new about page. You know, mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of reading the about page on your website, people are clicking on your Instagram and they're seeing who you are. And I think it feels more real to see who you are on your Instagram page mm -hmm. you know, because people post what they ate. They post what they're doing with their kids. They post their pets. And that is a really great way to get to know whether you feel like you're going to click with a wedding person or not. You know, do I, do I like this person? I want them at my big day. Um, I love as that. Far, mm -hmm. Yeah. As, as far as, you know, what, 
you should be doing on Facebook Live, it's it's kind of also, you know, what I was discussing, that really the same thing. You you want to show off what you're doing at events, you know, maybe putting together an outline with a client where you're at a you know, you're at a Starbucks together and you can, you can kind of show like, Hey, we just got this outline done and hold up the outline and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but you can also, you can also do, um, you know, actual live shots at an event. Uh, it's hard for DJs, I think, to do that. Cause we want to show off, you know, our dance floor action and Facebook live will <laughs> kind of flag you if you're broadcasting music because yep. you don't want to, so that's a challenge, but you know, there are plenty of other things happening at weddings that, that we can show there are. And, and behind the scenes as well. Mm -hmm. there are. Mm -hmm. So wait, I have a question. I'm going to interrupt because I know we, I don't think I prepped you at all for this, but I trust you to just roll with it. Can you give some tips for people that are wanting to use Facebook live? Because honestly, I think one of the reasons I avoid it is because I see so many bad Facebook live videos, things that are annoying, um, jerky, like, look here, look here. And, you know, and they just make me crazy. And so I just turn it off and I tune them out. And uh, there are people yeah. that use it well, but so what are some of those tips for Im simple things for improving a Facebook live video and actually having yeah. something good come out of it? <laughs> well, I, I think something that, you know, all three of us can probably relate to and I know a lot of other wedding professionals because we do have to speak especially as MCs but think of it like public speaking if I'm nervous when I get up on stage yeah I'm going to be shaky and I'm going to be jittery and I won't have a plan I'm going to shoot around my ideas from here to there it's mm -hmm. it's really similar because you're kind of on just like when you walk onto that stage you're on so Amen. one thing you can do is really just practice you know just Hey, this is, this is me getting the Christmas tree up and just do a, you know, don't make it something that's professional right away. Cause that might seem a little too scary. Start with something that's just personal with, with family and friends. And then once you feel like you understand, you know, how the buttons work and <laughs> that there's a delay and some of the other things that can be a little frustrating. Um, once you, once you have that it's sort of more comfortable, then you can think about doing some actual professional type things that are going to be work related. I think that's great Good advice. Too. And the, realize too that you're going live absolutely, but at the very end, it asks you if you want to post the video. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so you have you have that out. Don't have to post the video. Sure, you'll be live for that segment of time that you were live, but you don't have to let it upload. That's a little less scary. Afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. That's another component. I want to go back to Instagram and Pinterest because those are mm -hmm. two seemingly similar platforms. But I'm sure, would you say the marketing strategies will differ between them or are you having similar or same posts, if you will, on both sides? Because they tend to be more image driven. Is that Correct. what we're, yes. yeah, okay. I'm going to say them being image driven is probably the only similarity between the okay. two platforms because pinterest even the like ceo of pinterest has said this is not a social media site it's not for people to be liking and really interacting and engaging like the way that the other sites do really what pinterest is is a search engine for images which Got is it. why it's so conducive to making the the wedding planning boards and um scoping out you know, stuff you're going to be using visually most likely for your wedding. Um, so what, what works on Pinterest is actually posting your own content, your blog posts, because if people can see, you know, these are what your flowers look like, or these are what your photos look like, or these are a really awesome playlist from a DJ that's right here in my area. That's what's going to sell on Pinterest. That's what's actually going to get you click throughs and, click-throughs lead to leads and bookings and that's what we want whereas with Instagram it's a lot more about like I said like an about page mm -hmm. um, people cannot click through on the images if they want to visit your website they have to make sort of a concerted effort to go up to your profile sure. and click on this one tiny button whereas everything on Pinterest is clickable um, 
so yeah, the images is probably really the the main similarity. I think obviously the audience is fairly similar as far as it's a little bit more female on Instagram, but much more female on Pinterest, and you know mostly people in our age range of of brides that that were looking to book, so twenties and thirties, and tends to be people of a little bit above average income and average uh, education. So. I that would be a great title is so you think you know pinterest because obviously i didn't know pinterest pinterest has evolved more than my initial uh, understanding of it so that's awesome and great mm -hmm. thank mm -hmm. you i think that's one yeah. of the biggest barriers with pinterest is people really don't get it they right. don't they don't understand that like if you can see the value in blogging because that's going to help get you you know, SEO, then you should be able to understand the value in Pinterest. Pinning and blogging are like the, the same philosophy. It's really the, the same thing. Cool. Yeah, I think that's why I'm looking forward to the workshop and really diving in and learning more. Because in my head, I think when I first heard about Pinterest, it was like, okay, well, I don't have uh, pretty flowers to post. I don't sell dresses or like those, you know, really visual Right. things i owned a video company yeah cakes i would i could see that being huge on pinterest but i'm like okay i've owned a video company and i've done entertainment and djing and now i work primarily with bars and restaurants so i'm kind of i don't know if that's really for me but yeah. i think you're going to show me there are ways that i can reach other people through that audience and even possibly for my my speaking and personalities mm -hmm. stuff too yeah, well, um, you know, for me, the, the most understanding popular, it more. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I agree. It is really challenging as a DJ or as a videographer where, you know, the videographers can post videos. Um, and I do have some kind of tricks there on how to make the pins just right. Because if you post a raw video, it's, it's not really as strong as some other things we can do. But hmm. I... I will discuss all that, but um, what's working for me as a DJ on Pinterest is posting real weddings because that's what they're doing on Pinterest. They are researching how to lay out their venue or which venue they want, you know? <laughs> so if when they're doing that, they get to know who I am. And then by the time X and number of months later, they see me again on the knot, they already know me and they already trust me. Oh, I remember she had this whole board of real San Diego weddings and all the posts were really well done and had great pictures. And you know what I mean? It was really uh, something that stuck in their brain that they can remember yeah, me. Sure. The other thing that's working really well are playlists and um, my my single biggest uh, pin right now that's getting me local engagement is just a blog post I did of wedding venues under three thousand dollars. And when mm. you go into Pinterest and you type San Diego wedding, my pin comes up front and center. It's like literally the first result. So you know, just it's getting me traffic and. Um, that's bringing awesome. in bringing in a lot of clicks a lot of leads so and local traffic because i think that's local important yes. too so yeah. yeah so much to think about what i love stacy about what you've done is you've actually gone in and done the work at any conference we go to sure there's so many other distractions especially in vegas but what you did you leveraged that opportunity you had for you know, spinning at the social media marketing conference in San Diego and you actually engaged and you went in open mind, you, you got the knowledge and you went and applied it. And that's what you need to do. So we encourage you, you've got a workshop coming up, right? Yes. Yes. Tell us the details on that. I've mentioned it before. I said, I have my ticket, but tell everybody if they want to meet you in Las Vegas, when and where and how to sign up. Okay, so if you go on the Mobile Beat Las Vegas website, on the top, there's a tab that says education presentations. If you click on that and go all the way down to the bottom past the bios, that's where the extra workshops are because this workshop is not actually going to be a part of your conference ticket. You have to pay a little extra for it. The price is going to be $175, but I am going to extend my early bird price, which is $135, nice. to all listeners of the podcast awesome. and um yeah should be i'm sure that'll Thank help with, uh, some more people in the class so it'll be march 12th from 8 a.m to noon at the tropicana pavilion right before the conference starts awesome Sweet. thank so, you 
that is that is so great to hear. Thank you so much for that, Stacy. No, so thank you guys. We want to then, encourage you to do what Stacy did and actually put in the time, put put in the effort, take her workshop, and actually leverage your time spent in Vegas to actually make you real money afterwards uh, by using Stacy's techniques. In the and workshop. it sounds like if I haven't done it before, then I will be doing my first Facebook Live video on that date in March. I can't <laughs> wait to see that. <laughs> It's going to be fun. We'll be in a room full of other people equally as nervous. So, No, it's going to be great. And then if people want to know more about you and what you offer, I know you're a regular contributor to Book More Brides, but where else can people find you and the information that you have to share with event pros? Well, I do have a website where I do consulting, uh, weddingbizconsultant.com. And there are also some eBooks available on there that talk about some of my like branding strategies and pricing strategies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and of course you can follow me on mobile beat or book more brides. Um, I'm writing for the blog on mobile beat as well as for the digital magazine. And I usually write something for book more brides at least once a month, sometimes more. Good. Awesome. And we'll put links in our show notes and stuff yes. for people as well. Yeah. So check out the show notes for links. Stacy, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Thank you guys. I appreciate so much you guys having me and I look yes. forward to seeing you at mobile beat. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I'll see you at the show. Can't wait. Man, what a great episode we just had with Stacy. That was really fun. I love the nuggets she dropped. I hope you picked them up. They were amazing pieces of content. Hang on, back up. I love the information she shared. It was just amazing pieces of content talking about how Pinterest is more search engine for images. Did you pick that up? Also, how pinning and blogging are pretty much the same exact thing. So if you're doing one, you definitely should be doing the other. Yeah. And I just, I, I loved her thought process on social media and explaining some of the nuances uh, and the fact that Vicky is going to do her first Facebook Live. <laughs> yes, I'm on the hook for that. No, and again, this is, we talk about continuing education and always learning and always growing. And it would be hypocritical of me if I just said, oh yeah, that's great for you guys, but I'm yeah. good. Um, Cause I know this is an area where I have my little comfort bubble and I need people like Mitch and Stacy to help me reach outside of what I'm comfortable and challenge me to uh, expand my horizons and my comfort zone. So, so I'm looking forward to that workshop. And I know this format is, it's hard. I mean, there was, we try to cram a lot into a short format podcast, but you hopefully you all did get some of those little nuggets. And if you want more, you can either try to join Stacy and me in Las Vegas or um, contact her and uh, reach out to her through her website and yeah. some of her other trainings and articles that she produces. And, uh, Wedding Biz, WeddingBizConsultant.com. That's her website. So yeah. thanks so much for watching Fun the podcast stuff. today. We greatly appreciate it. This is Creating Connections for Event Pros podcast, providing personal solutions through understanding people better. See you next time. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Creating Connections podcast with Gittimer Certified Advisor Mitch Taylor and Certified Personality Trainer Vicki Musni. For more information on providing personal solutions through understanding people better, visit creatingconnections.biz.